Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Stop, look, listen. Here's a super idea for your breakfast tomorrow morning. First, pour out a heaping bowl full of delicious, crisp, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Then cover it with milk or thick, rich yellow cream. Top it with sliced bananas. And the very sight of it makes your mouth water for a taste. Take a big spoonful. And when crisp, tender, flavorful Quaker puffed wheat or rice melt in your mouth with the milk or cream and bananas, there's a super treat that can't be beat. So get ready. Get super delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice right away. Hawk Cooper was a mean-tempered, ruthless man to whom the life and property of others meant nothing. He had left the States when the gold rush in the Yukon started, not with the idea of working a claim as other men did, but with the purpose in mind of taking the hard-earned gains of the others by force. It didn't take Hawk Cooper long to meet a few men with the same purpose in mind. Within a short time, he'd become their leader, and Hawk Cooper's gang had begun to be notorious in the Yukon Territory. The gang's first job was the holdup of two prospectors on the trail below Whitehorse. <laughs> well, Ned, we'll soon be in town cashing in our gold. <laughs> we sure have been lucky. Yeah, <laughs> luckier than I dared to hope we'd be, Joe. Just think, we've been here only a few months, and here we are, riding along with our saddlebags, bulging with pokes of gold. <laughs> yeah. Hey, several riders coming towards us. Yeah, wonder if they... Look, they got bandanas covering their faces. Outlaws warn us to stop. Oh, 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 Get off your horses and keep your hands up. Sure, sure. I, I sure didn't expect this. All right, Pete, search the saddlebags. Yeah, right. Hey, we're in luck, Hawk. They're carrying pokes of gold. Let them alone. We worked hard digging that gold. Oh, shut up. Oh, gosh, they knocked him out cold. Yeah, and you'll get the same if you don't stop yet. You got all the gold, Hawk. Good. We'll get going and take the horses with us. Come on. Get it. Get it. Get it. A week later, Hawk and his men held up the Nugget Cafe at Whitehorse. Hey, that's the same gang that held up Joe and me on the trail. Leader's named Hawk. Pete, you and the others get their pokes and wallets while I keep them covered. Yeah, all right. Get over there in line, you are. Well, seems like I saw you before, Pop. <laughs> I reckon you had a long walk to get here to town, eh? The Mounties will catch up with you, mister. Then you won't be robbing folks no more. Oh, keep your mouth shut. Oh. You're lucky I didn't suck you on the head like I did your friend last week. We Hurry up, Pete. We haven't got all day. We're about ready to leave now. All right. So long, suckers. Come on, <laughs> Come on let's go. The next move by Hawk Cooper and his gang was made in Selkirk. They entered the bank just before closing time 
And as Pete and three others stood in places of advantage with ready guns, Hawk strode to the teller's window and spoke sharply. All right, you give me all the money you got there. What is this? I I guess you didn't notice this gun, mister. It's a holdup. Now get busy. Put the cash in this bag. Uh, Yeah, sure. Don't don't shoot. Hurry up. There's the money. Good. Pete, come here. What's these two, Slim? What do you want, Hawk? Keep me covered while I clean out the vault that's still open. Sure, but you better make it quick. It won't take me long. Hey, get away from that vault. By thunder. I'll shut you up. Come on, let's go. Right, come on. That afternoon, shortly after the robbery, the first snow of the winter season began to fall as the constable at Selkirk stood in the bank talking to the teller and the bank owner. About how much did the outlaws get, Mr. Canley? About 20000 in all, constable. The worst thing is the way they shot down the cashier in cold blood. Yes, it was the leader, a man they called Hawk, who fired the fatal shot. There were five men all together. They wore bandanas to hide their faces. I see. With this snow falling, it's going to be almost impossible to trail them. They rode away on horseback. I saw them leave. If the snow becomes heavier, they won't get too far on horses. They'll have to find a hideout. They must be apprehended. I'll post a reward of $1,000 for the capture of that murderer. Hawk, whatever his name is. They'll be caught eventually. I'll make an attempt to trail them now, but it may not bring results. Now, uh, you say you heard one of them called Hawk? Yes, he was the one who shot the cashier. I've had reports of a gang that was operating south of here led by a man named Hawk Cooper. Yes, it must have been the same gang. You should have some help, Constable. Well, I'm expecting Sergeant Preston here either today or tomorrow. I received word that he was heading south because of this Cooper gang. With Sergeant Preston and his dog, King, we may be able to catch Hawk Cooper and his men in spite of the snow. I'll leave now and try to pick up their trail. That evening, the Constable returned to town. He had lost the trail of the gang because of the falling snow. A short time after he entered his office, the door opened and Sergeant Preston came in with the great dog, Yukon King. Hello, Dave. I was afraid King and I'd be snowbound along the trail. Sergeant Preston, I'm sure glad to see you and King. We won't be here long. I'll pick up my dog team at the kennels and push on south in the morning. Just got to get in out of that storm. Yes, if you were heading southward to hunt Hawk Cooper and his gang, your journey's ended. What do you mean? Cooper and his men robbed the bank here this afternoon. Hawk Cooper killed the cashier. Are you sure it was Cooper's gang? Reasonably sure, Sergeant. One of the men called him Hawk. Says gang, all right. Tell me what happened. Briefly, the constable told the details of the robbery and of his unsuccessful attempt to trail the crooks. When he finished, Preston said, Well, Dave, they couldn't get very far on horseback. Snow's piling up fast. That's what I figure. Of course, they may stop somewhere and steal a couple of dog sleds to take the place of their horses. Yes, I thought of that. Anyone see them leave town? Yes, they rode out the North Trail. When they must have turned off, we came in on the North Trail. We didn't meet anyone. Maybe they stopped at a hideout somewhere before you came along. That's possible. Storm should blow out by morning, and we'll take my sled and search for them. Cooper's wanted for murder now. <laughs> Come on, King. I'll get some food and rest. Use my cabin, Sergeant. All oh, right, thanks. See you later, Dave. <laughs> Meantime, Hawk Cooper and his companions had followed the North Trail a short distance. Then it turned off and circled west to the river. There, they turned southward on the river trail, which was rarely used in winter, except by a few trappers who had cabins along the stream. Hope you know where we're heading, Hawk. I don't like the snow. I'm plenty cold. Yeah, so am I. Listen, Pete. Right now, we got to keep our minds on not getting caught, you understand? Uh, nobody can trail us in this storm. I say let's hole up in the first place we can find. You loco fools seem to forget a guy was killed in that bank hold up today. If we get caught, it means hanging. Don't forget that. You're the one that shot the cashier. Sure. That won't make any difference to the law. They'll figure all of you. You're just as guilty of murder as I am. I aim to see that we all get across the border at Skagway. We got plenty of cash. Once we get there, we'll be safe to enjoy it. Yeah, but the horses can't go much further in this snow. We never make it to the border in a thousand years. Oh, oh right. stop squawking, will you? I know we couldn't make it on horses. We'll pick up a couple of dog sleds someplace, along with some supplies. Well, then we'd better do it soon. I intend to, Pete. Remember that old sourdough I was talking to in the cafe yesterday? Yeah, what about him? Just this. He's got a cabin up this way. He was boasting about just buying a new dog team and sled. Said he sold his old one and the buyer was coming after it in a couple of days. I did hear him tell you that. Well, I figure we can stop there. Make the old fool give us supplies. And we'll take both the dog teams and move on at dawn. 
We'll leave our horses, but we'll tie him up so as he can't go for the law. It's a good idea. But he might starve to death. Ah, the man who bought the old dog team will let him loose in a couple of days. Should have known you'd have a plan in mind, (laughs) Hogan. After this, don't start beefing until you find out. Well, all right, come on, let's try to hurry it a little. That cabin can't be much further. Right. Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up. After leaving the constable's office, Sergeant Preston and King went to the constable's cabin to eat and rest. While Preston was still having coffee, someone knocked at the door. Quiet, King. I came to see the constable. He's still at his office, but come on in out of the cold. Oh, thanks. So anything I might do for you? I'm Sergeant Preston. I'm glad to know you, Sergeant. I am Hank Delman. I am new here. Came up from the States a little more than a month ago. I knew I hadn't seen you around. Something wrong? Is that the reason you want the constable? No, no, no. Nothing wrong, Sergeant. I just come to ask a favor. You see, I bought a dog team from a fellow named Mike Higgins. No, I know Mike. He has a cabin up along the river trail. That's right. Well, I was telling Mike I'd go up there and get the team and sled. I figured on using my horse to get there, but the snow started sooner than I expected, so I won't be able to use the horse. I know. I wanted to ask the constable if he'd take me there tomorrow or lend me his dog sled so as I could go and bring back the one I bought. I'll be needing it now. I'll tell you what. I intended to go out early in the morning anyway to look over the trails. Suppose I drop you off at Mike's place. Oh, say, that'll be fine, Sergeant. All right, where'll you be? At the hotel. I'll be ready and waiting any time you get there. It's a deal. I'll be by early, so be watching for me. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the morning, Sergeant. Old Mike Higgins was about to retire for the night when he heard horsemen stopping outside his small cabin on the river trail. Glory be. Now, who'd be coming here at this time of night and in this storm? And what's more on horseback? <laughs> sure, and I must be going batty asking myself all them questions. And all they have to do is open the door and find out. <clears throat> Sounded like more than one. That it did. Hold on, hold on, I'm coming. No need to bust the door down. Now, what can I do for you? Howdy, friend. We, uh, we got caught in a storm. We, uh, we want some hot coffee and get warmed up a bit before trying to push on to town. Come in, come on in. Thanks. Come on in, fellas. Uh, glory be, I didn't notice how many were out there. Make yourselves comfortable while they make a pot of coffee. Sure. <laughs> The old fool doesn't suspect anything yet. Why well, should he? Get your parkers off, boys. Be comfortable, like our friend there said. Right, right, right. Good. Sure, and the coffee will be ready in a jiffy. Uh, by the way, my name's Mike Higgins. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Mike. It's a nice, warm place here. Yeah, here. sure it is. <laughs> I wouldn't like to have to make the trip to town on horseback like you're figuring on doing, mister. I reckon we'll get along all right. Just don't worry about us. But why should we go to town, Hawk? We just came from there. Shut up! You mean you left town on horseback in spite of the storm? Now, where on earth could you be heading in such a hurry that you couldn't wait to get a couple of dog sleds? Look, mister, forget the questions and get us some coffee. Oh, that, that isn't ready yet. Uh, by the way, he called you Hawk. Is that your name? It seems to me I've heard... Say, I saw you in town at the cafe a few days ago. You're the fellow I was talking to. Well, what of it? Nothing. Only it strays to me that you left town in the storm and come straight here to my place. I remember telling you where I lived. Uh, Snoopy old cuss, isn't he, Hawk? Now that we're here, why don't you tell him the truth? The truth about what? Hey, I am beginning to think you came straight to my cabin on purpose. Uh, <coughs> sure we did, didn't we, Hawk? That's right, we did. And you'll find out all about it when I get ready to tell you, Higgins. In the meantime, you might as well fix some grub along with the coffee. Sure, and I don't mind making a pot of coffee for anyone who stops by. But tis more than you have right to ask... When you insist I fix food for the lot of you, that it is. The way Hawk's looking at you right now, I'd say he's about done asking, Higgins. Matter of fact, Hawk Cooper usually just takes what he wants. Hawk Cooper, did you say? Yeah, that's who I am, Hawk Cooper. And I don't like old duffers like you who ask a lot of questions either. Hawk Cooper, the notorious gang leader, glory be. Why did you come here? What is it you want of me? He told you once to get us some grub, didn't he? Hawk Cooper... You and your thieving outlaws can get your own grub. You lot have mine. Don't talk to me that way. Get up. Rustle us some of that grub fast. Sure, and the devil himself must have sent you. The way you come shoving a decent man around in his own cabin. You'll get worse than that if you don't do what you're told. We're staying here for the night. Then we want supplies from both of your dog teams. 
Cooper gets what he wants even if he has to kill an old codger like you to get it. Now get busy with a grub. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Bullseye for flavor. Yes, in every spoonful of the ready-to-serve breakfast cereal shot from guns, you enjoy swell, nut-like flavor. A bullseye for crispness. Yes, there's tender, melt-in-your-mouth crispness in those king-size kernels of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. A bullseye for nourishment. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice give you added food values of restored, natural-grade amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. You're always on the target when you reach for that famous big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Pour out a bowlful of crisp, delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Add milk or cream. Top with your favorite fruit. Man, oh man, these giant, flavor-rich premium grains are exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. They're shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. Shot through and through with nut-like flavor, too. Buy both delicious kinds. For variety, one morning eat Quaker puffed wheat. And the next morning, eat Quaker puffed rice. The famous cereals shot from guns. Now to continue. Hawk Cooper and his gang forced their way into Mike Higgins' cabin and demanded food and shelter. At dawn, they took all Mike's supplies and then forced him at the point of a gun to hitch up his new dog team and the one he had sold. Taking Mike back into the cabin, Hawk said, All right, boys. Dog teams are ready. Light snow has fallen enough to cover our tracks. You'll get caught sooner or later, Hawk Cooper. You can count on that. Ah, shut up and sit down in it. <laughs> you have to do all that shoving. Hey, that yapping of yours gets me. Pete, tie him up and do a good job of it. Now, wait a minute. Sure, and I starve to death if you tie me up and leave me here alone. Yeah, and you might even freeze to death. You never can tell. It's a toss-up which will happen first. <laughs> Get busy, Pete. Got to find some cord first, son. Stop wasting time here. Use my bandana to tie his hands. You can use your own to tie his feet. Hey, all right. This won't take long. Then we'll be on our way. Later that morning, Sergeant Preston prepared to leave the constable's cabin. Well, King, I think we're ready to pick up Hank Delroy at the hotel. I'd like to go along with you, Sergeant, to hunt for Cooper's hideout, but I have to check on a couple of prisoners at the jail first. I'll go on and take Hank to Mike's place. Why don't you finish what you have to do and then follow us? I'll wait for you there, and then we'll set out together to hunt Cooper's gang. That's a good idea. I won't keep you waiting long. Good. See you later, then. Let's go, King. With Hank on the sled, Sergeant Preston rode the runners as they moved up along the river trail toward Mike Higgins' cabin. Preston was saying, I think the snow will stop soon, Hank. Yeah, but plenty fell yesterday and last night. Too much for anyone to travel on horseback. Uh I bet you're thinking of those crooks you want to find. That's right, Hank, I am. Sky's overcast. I'm sure more snow will fall later today. They won't be able to get far without dog teams. I'll sure be glad to get the one I bought from Mike Higgins. I appreciate you bringing me up here, Sergeant. Glad to do it. There's Higgins' place just ahead. I hope Mike has a coffee pot on. I could use a cup of hot coffee. So could I. Looking. Strange Mike's dogs aren't yapping like they generally do. Yes, it is. Let's go inside. Come on, King. Sergeant Preston, thank heaven you came here. Mike, what's happened? Tied hand and foot. Now I got you loose. Tell me how this happened, Mike. A fellow named Hawk Cooper and someone... Yeah, that explains everything. There. They stayed all night. They left about two hours ago, taking me supplies and my new dog team, along with the one I sold you. Too bad the snow covered their tracks, Sergeant. You won't be able to trail them. It would be possible if King had this scent. Mike, those bandanas, whose are they? One of them, Hawk Cooper's... And the other belongs to one of those men by the name of Pete. That's all I want to know. King can get the scent from them. Here, King. Find them, fella. 
Hank, you stay here with Mike. King and I'll pick up their trail outside and follow them. Right. When the constable gets here, tell him to follow us. The snow's stopped. He can see our tracks. Better be careful, Sergeant. They're a mean lot that they are. I'll be careful, Mike. Come on, King. We have work to do, boy. See you both later. So long. So long. We'll send the constable trailing you. Bye. Good luck, Sergeant. Find them, King. Find them. <laughs> All right. On King. On your husky. <laughs> Meantime, Hawk Cooper and his men had swung across to the south trail and had headed toward Whitehorse. It was almost noon when they approached the deserted shack set back from the trail, which they'd used as a hideout on their trip north a few weeks previous. We'll eat and warm up at the shack for an hour or two before we go on. That sure suits me. Yeah, I could do with some food about now. Think it'll be safe to stop, Hawk? Sure, sure it will. Snow fell long enough after we left Higgins' place to cover our tracks. It'll probably start snowing again before we're ready to leave the shack so nobody can trail us. Well, here we are. Ho! Ho! Though the light snow had covered the tracks of the crooks, the great dog king could still pick up the scent which he had found on the bandanas. Sergeant Preston, who was traveling light, made faster time than the gang. About an hour and a half after they had reached the shack, Preston came within sight of it. He called a halt. Looking. Hey, Quiet, Chief. Quiet, boy. Oh, smoke coming from the chimney of that shack. We'll leave the team here behind this ridge, fella. You and I'll circle around and investigate. Come on. Inside the shack, the outlaws had eaten and rested. Hawk Cooper was anxious to hit the trail again and spoke to Pete. Pete? <laughs> Take what's left of the supplies and put them on the sled. I'll bring the cash out when we're ready to start. Yeah, all right. The stuff's packed up, ready to go. I'll take it out now. About the rest of you. You ready to leave now? Yeah, yeah, Anytime sure. Anytime you see. You better get into your parker so we can get going. By the time Pete's finished storing away the stuff on the sleds out back, we'll be ready to leave. Yeah, but, Hawk, if it's going to storm some more like you think, why don't we hold up here let's over? Yeah, you said we'd be safe here. Why buck a storm if we don't have to? Listen, listen. I'm running this outfit, and what I say goes. If we travel through a storm, so much the better. We'll be sure no one can follow us. Yeah, I reckon you're right at that. All right, so. then. Get your parkers like I told you. Great! Hey, 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 a mounty. Hey, how'd he trail us? Caught us off guard. Gun him! I'll get him! On it! Stop! Oh, I'll shoot you, fool! Oh, yeah. taking quick advantage of Preston's attention to the man who had started the shoot, raised his gun to fire, but the intelligent dog king moved in like a flash. Oh, 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 oh. King oh. sprang, grabbing Hawk's gun arm. Hey, this dog, get him away! Come, King, watch him pull up. Oh. Now only two of you hold guns. Drop them. Don't do it, fellas. I get a gun right behind this money. Good work, Pete. Call off that much, you. King, here, boy. <laughs> now drop your gun, money. Now get over there. Yeah, I forgot you were out back, Pete. Now pick up my gun. Oh, shut up, you were a plug you. Open that door back there, money, and put that dog in the back room. Go on. Come along, King. <laughs> inside, boy. Go inside. I'll close that door and come over here. All right, boys. Tie that money to a chair. Good work, Pete. You sure turned the tables on him and his hey, dog. Sure did, yeah, Pete. my leg. You, you got to do something. I'll fix it for you. Don't worry. It's going to delay our getting away from here. But now that we have the money with us, we don't have to worry about being trailed. <laughs> Tie him up while I fix Joe's wound. Hurry it up. Yeah, come on. Man. It was about an hour before the outlaws were once more ready to leave. Pete was saying... Hey, Hawk, what about the money and dog? Are we just going to leave him here? Sure. But to make certain he don't get loose, we leave him here with a bullet in him. And the dog will get one, too. That'll teach him we mean business. Yeah, he thought he was smart. Well, Monty... Got anything to say before I use this gun? They hang you for murder, Cooper. <laughs> We're already wanted for murders, aren't we, fellas? <laughs> Come on, there's no use wasting time. I'll plug in, then I'll go around to the window and plug the dog. This bullet has your name on it, buddy. Drop that gun! Hey, what the... Another one hey, got him, Hawk! Hawk, hey, who was standing in directly in front of Preston, turned to look at the constable. As he made a move to shoot, Preston suddenly flung forward, tipping the chair against Hawk's... No, oh, my God! Hey, Hawk got knocked down. I'll get the constable. Try it. Get that constable! Use your gun! Yeah. I'll fix this mounty with a bullet! The two crooks who were not wounded sprang apart and prepared to shoot it out with the constable, while Hawk reached for the gun which had dropped from his hand. 
At that moment, a gray streak flashed through the open door and grappled with the gang leader. No, get this dog off of me! The entrance of King had startled the two crooks who faced the constable, and they momentarily turned to watch. The constable ran forward. This will settle you! I'll drop that gun. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Get this dog away! Get him away! Hell, King! Hell, fella! Watch it! Yeah. Uh, yeah, if it hadn't have been for that dog leader... Shut leader. up and get over there! Watch him, uh, King! Cut me loose, Dave! All right. Uh, there. That's better. I'll get my gun. There it is. Dave, you got here just in time. King's the one who saved the day for us. And you saved my life when you fell against Hawk. Where did King come from, anyway? He was shut up in the back room. I heard the crash of glass, so I knew that King had heard the commotion and jumped through the window. I saw your dog team back by the ridge, so I figured I'd better sneak up on the shack. Good thing you did, Dave. Hawk Cooper, I arrest you and your men for robbery and murder in the name of the Crown. We'll get them back to town as soon as possible, Dave. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will return with a brief message. They're your best buy. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are your best cereal buy. They're your best buy in flavor. Your family gets so much delicious nut-like flavor in every spoonful. They're your best buy in crispness. The choice premium grains of wheat and rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. And for added food values... Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice give your whole family restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1 niacin and iron. So at breakfast every morning, pour out big bowlfuls from the red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Pour on milk or good rich cream, topped with sliced bananas or other fruit. There's an economical deluxe family breakfast. Remember, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns comes in a fine modern package with a sealed inner lining. That wonderful lining doubly protects the flavor and crispness until the very moment you serve it. That's why Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is never sold in bags or bulk. Another reason it's your best buy. So buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. This being our last adventure under the Quaker Oats sponsorship, we take this occasion to extend our appreciation of the generous cooperation of the present sponsor. The challenge of the Yukon will return to the air in the near future with a new sponsor. Please check your local newspaper for the time and station. And meanwhile, if you've enjoyed these adventures, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Please address your card or letter to Challenge of the Yukon... Detroit 26, Michigan. Thank you. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.